The NTSB has been pouring painstakingly over this crash site. It's just behind me. You can see the cranes just above where the rail line is. Now, to give you an idea of the engineer at the helm yesterday, it's 32-year-old Brandon Boston. He lives in Forest Hills, Queens. We talked to his superintendent today as well as neighbors. They say that he loved his job. The massive cleanup is continuing tonight, but at the same time, big questions are swirling about about the engineer of this train and what he was doing in the moments before that crash. And tonight, leaders right here in Philadelphia are slamming the engineer's excessive speed. That eighth victim was found in the wreckage of the first train car early this morning. It's a heartbreaking death toll now, but it does bring the search to a close as all 243 passengers who were on that train are now accounted for. The search, though, for answers in this case continues. The engineer lawyers say he has no recollection of the crash itself, only some of the moments leading up to it. So NTSB investigators say they plan to sit down with the engineer, literally hand him a blank piece of paper and have him write down what he does remember. When do your investigators plan to interview the engineer? Uh, in, in the next few days. We're really pleased that he's agreed to, uh, to uh, uh, be interviewed by the NTSB. Amtrak says service will likely be suspended on Monday, but they're hoping to resume that service between Philadelphia and New York by Tuesday or sometime early next week. Chilling details from the NTSB tonight. Investigators and officials are now looking at the possibility that the Amtrak train that derailed had debris flying at it or even the possibility that the train itself was shot at. Well, Christina Maurice, it is a chilling series of events that could possibly shed some light on just what happened on those tracks just behind me. The NTSB interviewed three people today, including the engineer, who they said was cooperative but who doesn't remember much, and a conductor who heard some ominous radio calls just minutes before the crash. Three minutes after Amtrak 188 left 30th Street Station in Philadelphia, a conductor on board heard a radio alert from a SEPTA commuter train up ahead. She recalled that the SEPTA engineer had reported to the train dispatcher that he had either been hit by a rock or shot at. This is what the SEPTA train's windshield looked like after the strike. And now there are reports that a third train, an Amtrak Acela 2173, was also hit near Philadelphia that night. One passenger even tweeted CBS2 with this picture of the damaged train window saying, quote, rocks thrown at our car outside Philly. Amtrak engineer Brandon Boston spoke with NTSB investigators today. He said that he did not feel fatigued, nor did he report any illness. Boston didn't recall being struck by debris, but NTSB officials say the Amtrak windshield was damaged. This is new exclusive surveillance video from the crash scene. You can see the train fly by with flashes of light at the moment of the derailment. High voltage wires snap and the cars fly off the rails. The Amtrak train was going 106 miles per hour. The derailment killed eight people, including Naval Academy midshipman Justin Zemzer, who was laid to rest today. The 20-year-old left Annapolis bound for far Rockaway, Queens Tuesday night, but never made it home. He was loved and he's going to be sorely missed. Now, the NTSB did not speculate how that possible flying debris could have led this train to speed up to 106 miles per hour, but it does lead to some questions. Was the engineer distracted or panicked or even wounded? The FBI is now on site assisting in this massive investigation. Live in Northeast Philadelphia tonight, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News. Jessica, thank you.